Now, we thank you for the preservation of life. And we thank you that you are good to everyone. And your goodness will affect and will come and influence and impact every life today in Jesus' name. Wipe all the tears of your people away. Those who are sorrowful, make them glad. And those who are mourning, cheer them up. Let the song of praise be in every mouth in Jesus' name. Sunshine, glory, saints, rejoicing in every heart, even from today in Jesus' name. Even when people seem they have got to their last day, praying their last prayer, and thinking the end has come, a new beginning will start in your life in Jesus' name. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see down. Today we're preaching the most fully praising God and we need to be every day till the end of our lives. Today a statue on a new road on a new journey with a new attitude and with the songs of praise in your mouth in Jesus name look at Psalm 145 verse 1 and verse 2 it says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name, how long, and ever. Look at verse 2. It says, every day, every day, and I will praise thy name, ever and ever. It's reading from verse 1. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord. At all times, at all times, I will bless his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And then in verse 2, it says, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear their love and be glad. Verse 3 tells us, Oh, magnify the Lord and let us exalt his name together. Psalm 119, verse 33. 119, verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Unto the end. I shall pray unto the end. Am I praising the Lord? I'm serving the Lord unto the end. In myself to the service of the Lord until the end i will keep it unto the end verse 112 in verse 112 i have inclined my heart that statutes always even unto the end perform the statutes of the lord even unto the end today as we're talking about praising god we're talking on the subject purpose fully praising god every day till the end the three points we're looking at number one the heart of appropriate unblemished praises with godliness we're praising the lord the Lord from the death of our inward innermost soul, praising the Lord with appropriate unblemished um, praises all from the heart. Number two, the of acceptable and praises to God. There's a history of praising the Lord. There are people who have praised the Lord before, acceptable. Other people praise unacceptable, and we look at the history, and then we're able to draw a conclusion. We should be praising the Lord. Number three, the height of ascending or ceasing praises for God's glory. All we do, we're seeing 
We're praising for God's glory. We're giving thanks for God's glory. We're rejoicing for God's glory in the church, at home, in the marketplace, anywhere. Everything we do, including praising the Lord, is all for God's glory. Let's look at number one. Number one is uh, the heart of blemish praises godliness and uh, let's look at isaiah chapter 25 we're reading from verse 1 isaiah 25 verse thou art my god that's the same soul that's not a drunkard that's not a smoker that's not a person that not a goat in the sight of the Lord is a person who has surrendered his life. He says, My God, it's a person who has repented and turned around and he gave himself to the Lord, and therefore he can say, My God. A drunkard cannot say, My God. An unsafe person cannot say, My God, in a real gospel way. In a a person is still living uh, and serving the devil cannot say my god before our praises will be acceptable in this you must have repented you must have separated from sin and from the world and from evil you know that you're in the family of god and you can say i'm born again i'm saved i'm transformed i'm a child of god and god the father he says oh lord thou art my god i will extol thee i will play praise for thou hast done wonderful things salvation wonderful healing being wonderful the liberty to serve the lord without hypocrisy in holiness and righteousness of our life. That's the wonderful thing he has done. He has redeemed us. He has saved us. Fight us. He has made us holy. He has made us new creatures in Christ. He has healed us. He has delivered us. He has written our name in the book of life in heaven. He has done wonderful things like counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. It tells us in Psalm 138, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 138, verse 1, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods will I sing to thee. And then in verse 2, it tells us, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy loving kindness and for thy thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name and then in verse 8 it says in verse 8 that perfect that which concerneth me me say it now the lord will perfect which concerneth me about the lord will Thy mercy, O Lord, forever forsake not the works of thine own hands. In the time of trouble, time of trial, and in the time of sickness, and time of any pressure upon your life, it will not forsake you. When you are poor, when you need money, when you need things that will bless your life, the Lord will. When your father and your mother, when your friends and your acquaintances, when they don't remember you and when they forget you, the Lord will always remember you. In the night, He will answer your prayer. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, our praise for the provision of the achievable God. We're praising Him. Because it's the unfathomable God, unsearchable God, abundant provision for us. Number two, the power and perfection of the unchangeable God. It's not changing. His love has not changed. His power has not changed. And His goodness has not changed. Even today, you'll find the 
the goodness of God in your life in Jesus name number three the peculiarity of people praising with unreprovable godliness let's look at number one there number one there our praise for the provision of the unsearchable god look at psalm 145 verse 3 psalm 145 verse 3 great is the lord your god is great i said our god is great and you'll find his power great greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable his greatness is unsearchable look at verse 9 in verse 9 it tells us the lord is good to how many people how many people who is going to experience that the goodness of god here today where is he where is she you in jesus name and as a Jesus went out doing good in all, everyone, everyone. He wants, he wants to deliver all. He wants to bless, to put the joy and happiness of service in the heart of everyone. You will not be an exception. Your wife will not be an exception. Your husband will not be an exception. And the whole family, you'll not be an exception. The Lord is good to us. tender mercies are over his works. You will have your own share. Look at Psalm 68, verse 19. In Psalm 68, we're looking at verse it says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us. Who daily loadeth us. With what? With what? With benefit. It will load you to blessing. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth all. Even the God of our salvation wants to set up salvation. You turn away from your sin. You repent. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you. The Lord, I leave all my sins, I leave all the works of Satan, I leave all the works of darkness, and I move away from the dirty things of the world, and I look at Christ who died for me. Lord, I believe that you lived a perfect life, you died for me, but then you rose again just for me. I accept salvation is yours. I said salvation is yours. And then from that point on, everything you need, ask, seek, and knock, and the Lord will load your blessings in Jesus' name. So there, in number two is the power and perfection of the unchangeable God. The power and the perfection unchangeable God. In Psalm 147, I'm reading from verse 3, He healeth the broken in heart. He healeth, He healed before, He will heal in the day, He's still healing. And if you're sick there, any part of your life, from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, He's healing you today. You will not carry sickness away from Jesus' name and bind us up their wounds. If you have been wounded, if you have been crushed, the Lord will bind up your wounds in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. It is our Lord and of great power, his understanding is infinite. It says it's unsearchable in Psalm 145, and now it says in Psalm 147, it is infinite. You cannot get to the end of it. And that infinite power, that immeasurable power, that power so great and so high and so broad and so deep will work in every life in Jesus' name. 
Look at Psalm 148. I'm reading from verse 1. In Psalm 148, verse 1, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the heights. Verse 2 tells us, it says, praise ye him. All angels praise him. All his hosts. Have you noticed that? Praise him. All his angels. God created myriads of angels, innumerable number of angels. Then the head called Lucifer went away from the Lord. He wanted to compete with the Almighty God and he drew one thought of the angels after him. Those people, those angels, they cannot praise God. They cannot praise God in disobedience. God in their satanic nature. They cannot praise God. Now the psalmist is talking to the holy angels that remain and the obedient angels that remain, the loyal, faithful angels that remain. Satan, he cannot praise God. And the thought of the angels that followed him cannot praise God. The same thing with us. If we are submissive unto him, if we're sent the children of God, if we're living holy, if we're totally submissive, our soul, in our mind, in our spirit unto him will be like those. Praise the Lord. But if we follow after Lucifer, as those evil angels followed after Lucifer, and then they're doing the, they're doing the work of Satan, they could not praise God. If we're following after Satan, if we're following after darkness, if we're following after evil, if we're in our tongue with our action the sinners like those falling angels cannot praise god but if we remain committed unto the lord praise him all his angels him all his hosts look at verse 8 in verse 8 it tells us there it says fire and hail, snow, and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling him. Anything that comes near your life or into your life, it will bring the praise of God. It will bring the praise of God. The hail will bring the praise of the snow, will bring the praise of God. The vapor will bring God. The stormy wind, look at that. Let us go to the other side. They are coming to the other side. And then Jesus got into the boat, and then uh, the disciples into the boat, and they were rowing. They were looking at the shore. They were looking at the destination to the other side. And then uh, stormy wind arose bringing water into the ship and then they woke him up master master carest not thou that were perish and then he rose up it will rise up for you and then peace everything came to a calm that fire in your family everything will be quenched and that hill falling down everything will stop right there and the will come to an end you will praise the lord and then uh, everything came to a calm and they were amazed they were surprised what manner of man is this that even the that obey him every storm in your life will obey the word of the lord in shame. fulfilling his word fulfilling his word the word of god in your life will be time no matter what is happening in jesus name look at uh, uh, psalm 62 what? 11 psalm 62 god has spoken once to my life i say god has spoken to my life god has spoken have I had this that power belongeth unto God? Power belongeth unto God. Power belongeth unto God. 
something so heavy in your life that that power will not remove and there is no sorrow that is so deep in your life that will not uh, stop everything negative in your life power belongs unto God in Jesus name number three now number three the peculiarity pressing with unreproachable godliness we're looking at 35 we're reading from verse 4 the peculiarity of the people that are praising the Lord they are peculiar they're not like Egyptians they're peculiar they're not like the Canaanites they're peculiar they're not like the Chaldeans they're peculiar they're not like Pharisees and that's what makes them peculiar is God acceptably that peculiarity of the people of God must be in your life in Psalm 135 verse 4 for the Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure for his peculiar treasure Exodus chapter 19 I'm reading from verse 5 Exodus 19 verse 5 now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then it shall be a peculiar treasure unto me a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine all the earth is mine by creation but then those who are saved and those who are redeemed from this dirty world and they come and they put their faith in this only begotten son and a new life then comes he says all those people that he is creator he is redeemer and by redemption by salvation by conversion they become the people of the Lord and then in verse 6 he tells us in verse 6 and you shall be on kingdom of praise and an holy nation not a defiled nation and not a sinful nation not a backsliding nation not a falling nation and not a lukewarm nation if a good peculiar people they will praise on be an holy nation titus chapter 2 verse 14 in titus chapter 2 verse 14 who gave himself that jesus christ he died for you on the cross so you'll be saved number one so you'll be sanctified number two died on the cross so that number one you'll be pardoned all your sins number two you'll be purified he died on the cross so that it will set you free number one number two you'll be free and gave himself for us that him us from all iniquity and purify and sanctify and purge and make holy and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works a peculiar people you know peculiar people that can hurry every day can hurry in the world they are tired they're weary they're sluggish they're just pushing on in life it's like they're going to give up even the next minute but peculiar people when the fire of the holy ghost comes upon you you are saved you are sanctified and you are baptized and the holy ghost is burning and all the chaff is burnt you become so peculiar that what and whatever your disposition you become zealous of good works you become zealous in evangelism in soul winning and zealous in serving the Lord when they say let us go into the house of the Lord and worship the Lord they spring under your feet and you're moving on with energy and excitement because you're a peculiar person in the sight of the Lord and you're zealous of good works I pray that the zeal of the Lord will never leave in Jesus name there it says, but ye are in a generation. The Lord has chosen me. I said, the Lord has chosen me. 
Say it for yourself now. Like he chose Moses, he has chosen you. Like he chose, he has chosen you. Like he chose Joshua, he has chosen you. Like he chose in, the, in his family of many children, he singled you out, and the Lord has chosen you. Aren't you happy? Aren't you grateful? Like he chose Peter, like he chose Paul, choosing person. And as you look at yourself today, while you are walking away after the service, and you look at yourself, I am chosen. Do good in life, I am chosen. Here for a purpose, I am chosen. Nothing can stop your to finish what he has chosen you for in Jesus' name. If any weakness, any sickness, any infirmity is going to stop the purpose of your choice today, they come out of your life in Jesus' name. It says, but ye, a chosen generation, stood a holy nation, a peculiar people, a peculiar people, a peculiar people, peculiar people. You know, the devil will want you to forget your peculiarity. You see, everybody is doing it. I can't, I'm peculiar. Everybody is going there. I can't, I'm peculiar. Everybody is failing and they have to bribe, uh, you know, lecture whoever before they can make anything at all. I can't because I'm peculiar. I am peculiar. Everywhere you go, your life, your attitude, your conduct, your comportment, and your stature, everything peculiar in Jesus' name. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye shall show forth the praises of him. Those are the only people that can show forth the praises of the Lord because they have been redeemed. Their lives are no different, are now different, and because of that, they can offer praises unto him. Who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light? Thank God that's true about you today. We're coming to number two now. Number two is the history of acceptable praises to God. As we look at all these Psalms, look at Psalm 145, verse 4. It says, One generation shall praise thy word to another and shall declare thy mighty as from this generation to this generation to that generation is the history of the praises of God. Look at Psalm 146 verses 1 and 2. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Then in verse 2 it says, Why? I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being now. The history of praising the Lord, there were people that praised the Lord. Doesn't, they don't make any movement. They, don't, they just open their mouth and they are singing the Lord. Even without instruments, they are praising the Lord. And in 146, I'm reading from verse 10, it says in verse 10, the Lord shall reign forever, even that unto all generations praise ye the Lord. Psalm 147, reading from verse 10, he delighted not in the the horse, if you know the history of the people of old in their history, there were some people that uh, won any battle 
horses like alexander the great and then they will celebrate they will decorate all those horses and then they'll be making some acrobat acrobat or some gymnastics and they said they were praising god and god said i delight not in the stress of the horse and he taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man there were people that will you know they make their legs uh, different different ways some of them will when they were young they will bench the uh, the legs so they can have four legs other people will wear some kind of stockings a colorful things and then some special shoes high heel low heel or whatever and they want to specially prepare for praising their gods and god said in the history of a praising god he doesn't delight in the strength of the horse he does not take pleasure in the legs of a man or the legs of a woman look at verse 11 in verse 11 the lord take pleasure in while they are praising god they look at what god wants what god does not want the attitude god wants and the attitude god does not want hear him they're praising the lord but they want to honor him in that place they're praising the lord but they want to fear him they want to be obedient to his word and they say god doesn't appreciate that we can't praise god and sin we can't be praising god and lying we cannot be praising god and praising idols we cannot be praising god and going into darkness all those things god does they jettison them, they forsake them because they fear the Lord while they are praising the Lord. The Lord take in them that fear Him, in those that hope in His mercies. I'm reading from verse 1 Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord from the praise Him in the high. It says, Praise ye the Lord in the heavens from the heavens now when you are praising the lord you have to ask yourself is this going to be are the angels of god in heaven in praising god are they doing this in heaven is jesus christ the very son of god in heaven now as he's praising the heavenly father you see doing this in heaven you see the history of praising the lord from heaven then to israel to all the generations and to all the people so the praises of the lord they are what we call parameters they have what we call the perimeter they have the territory how do they do it in heaven how did the Israelites do it acceptably the people that feared the Lord and they're not just ministering to the flesh how did they do it and it says you praise the Lord from the heavens you praise him in the heights look at verse 2 there in verse 2 it tells us praise him all his angels you see the praises of the lord as history it is not just uh, you know the praises that people do here you know sometimes uh, we have had uh, you know the experience of people uh, musicians of the nightclub and they have their way of rejoicing they're just relaxing uh, and their frustrations and then they a little bit of uh, you know womanizing a little is and that and then the you know the drummers and the people will get there with the electronic guitar electric they praise and praise and praise and some of them they get converted church or they start a church and the things they were doing before they didn't know that if any man be in christ all things pass away all things become uh, new they bring the night club music into those assemblies they are setting up and they think the lord they have not studied they seen uh, the lord that they started with the angels of god in him all his angels and so is it by you know robbing bodies of boys and girls together is of men and women together is it by throwing their buttocks here and here 
right is that how the angels do it in heaven we have to look at the history of praising the lord so that we don't bring fornication adultery and lost and immorality and sensuality into the house of god and then we're praying that were praising the Lord, the angels did it. And when they did it, we look at the history, how this that one comes in. And when you look at music, you must understand that there are different kinds of music. You know, there is singing in heaven that even never knew because they didn't taste redemption but when i sing a redemption story angels fold their wings because they never knew the joy of redemption that's the kind of singing we're going to have redeemed souls have their singing they're singing and they have their prayer have you known that you know the military when challenging them to put courage in they have the kind of music the military does not play the nightclub music they play music that will pump blood into their vein that will give them courage do you know that in the dentist if you go to do the dentistry work to soothe the pain there's a kind of music they this place when they stretch up there and they're trying to you know puncture this and uh, that will come you music has various levels classical music like the messiah then there is the normal ordinary music like uh, you know charles wesley that he composed that were praised the lord in churches and then there are worldly music there's worldly music and then as you know the history then you say that one is not for church that one is not for worshiping the lord that one is not acceptable to god because you are discerning praise ye him all his angels praise ye him all and now we come to someone for I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 149, reading from verse 1. Praise the Lord. Sing unto, unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. And then in verse 2, rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of, of Zion be joyful in in the king the one that is to come look at verse 3 here in verse 3 let them praise his name in the dance now you understand when we say when dance it's not the modern day dancing the modern day dancing had not come at that time when this was written in the dance and there are you know different kinds of dancing and the different kinds of steps in fact there are kinds of dancing you cannot have there are people that have to go for training how they take the steps how they move how they swing and how they do all those things they have to be trained for that but that's the world but this one is talking about that the people of God, let them pray in the dance. Now, we must ask the dancing that some people have in their various assemblies. Where did they get that? They club exactly the kind of dancing they were having in the dancing halls and the night clubs when they were they are born again and then some of those who are not even born again they see that there's dancing over there and what they're doing in the nightclub and they rush there and they say that's my church that's my kind of fellowship there's liberty there's freedom and then they can do the dancing not the dancing of the bible i'm sure you know that it's not the dancing of holy people righteous people the saints of god it's the dancing in the nightclub and then they will look for their concordance and look for a word and then they discovered psalm 149 verse 3 it says let them praise his name 
danced. They said, I got a verse for what I'm doing now. They were saying, and they were looking for it. Step by what they are doing. That's different. Somebody is preaching false doctrine and verse to justify the false doctrine. That's different. But you there is the Bible. God. What do we praise God with? And with what attitude and heart do we praise God? You go from is not from the practice and then you are looking for something to justify what you are doing let them sing praises unto him Gabriel and have let's come to psalm 150 i'm reading from verse 4 it says praise him with trimble and dance praise him with string instruments and organs three things we're looking at number one the beginning dancing in praises. Number two, the business and back dancing for pleasure, for pleasure. Number three, the age of the defiled pretenders. Look at number one there. We're looking at Exodus, Exodus chapter uh, 15, verse 20. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, to in her hand and all women went out and all the women went out after her after whom after the prophetess with timbrels and with dances now if uh, there is any announcement in any of these nightclubs today and they say that you know there's going to be a dancing tonight and then only women without men, without boys, old or young, no boy, no man will be there, only women. And then the person going to lead the dance tonight will have sought her out. She's called Miriam, a prophetess, and she is going to preach about repentance about salvation and then after that he will lead the women in that have many people those who go to nightclubs and those who go to houses of dancing in worship they, they are not interested in just women alone dancing you know? and then the prophetess leading them don't throw your body like that don't get near to that person like that that one will generate less pianism don't do this don't do that they don't like that they, they don't want commandment they don't want restriction in their dancing you see what happened here this is the history how it started miriam and the women a prophetess and the and not to exhibit their bust or their buttocks or anything it just to praise the lord but look at verse 21 it says and miriam answered them sing ye to the lord not to moses sing ye to the lord not to a politician sing ye unto the lord not to the flesh for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider as he thrown into the sea and then in verse 22 it tells us in verse 22 it said for moses so moses brought israel forth from the red sea went out into the wilderness of shore and they went three days in the wilderness look at this and they found no water and they found no water 24 now in verse 24 and the people murmured and the people murmured and the people what shall we drink from then the bitterness you know the time dancing dancing have chance to be taught the word of god by the time the preacher to preach it cannot go beyond 20 30 minutes one they're tired and the one that is interesting to them is and so they are not taught the one these people after they dancing then there was no water to drink they had not given time to being taught that in every we praise god 
when there's water we we'll praise god when pharaoh is defeated praise god and when we we'll come out of that red sea and then there's no water the one we even come to is bitter it's not drinkable they don't know to praise god all those people God, they are praising God in all those assemblies where there is dancing. That's all they know. They don't understand the church of God. And when the reverses came, when there is no job, when there is no health, when there is uh, nothing for them to eat, and murmuring, the dancing, the dancing of being taught the word of God. Exodus chapter 32. I mean, the in Exodus chapter 32, we're looking at verse 19, and it came to pass, they came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf and, and the dancing. Moses went to the mountain top, and then he spent 40 days there. By the time he came down, conviction. By the time he came Faith. By the time he came down, they're totally backsliding and they have gone for idol worship. The people who are concentrating on dancing and dancing and throwing the body here and there, they don't have conviction. And when any little difficulty comes up and the pastor is not around or the Sunday school teacher is not around, and when there's nobody to encourage them or pump them up or lift them up, they say, I don't read the Bible anymore. They've given so much time to dancing. The word of God is not there. And then it's only dancing and Moses. And he cast the tables out of his hand and break them beneath the mount and then in verse 31 he tells us in verse 31 Moses returned unto the Lord and said oh this sinned a great sin check up in all those places where the attention is only dancing dancing with the teenagers and the young people see the kind of life in those places the immorality there, the fornication there, and even the breaking of families there, that these uh, young uh, dancers and worship leaders, even the worship leaders, check up their history, check up what they are doing, they are not able to live a holy, righteous life, they are too much, they are not of the spirit, Moses returned and said, Lord, oh, great sin, and uh, them gods of gold verse 32 says it says in verse 32 yet now if thou a sin and if not blot me i pray out of thy book which thou hast three and the lord said unto moses so so ever has sinned against me him when I float out of my book, all those people dancing, they sinned against me, they made a calf, and instead of praising me and me, they are praising the calf of gold. People that have done that, I'm not interested in their dancing. That's I don't like dancing that's sensual dancing uh, and that one is not to the glory of my name i'm not interested in them if you are interested in them uh, you are not interested in what god is interested in they dress cantily and part of those ladies part of their upper part of their body as they bend see everything is deliberate it is to attract the attention of those keep close together they hold themselves and keep themselves to themselves and then they say they are dancing and then they are whispering some things in that God is not interested in that not one of sinful people assembly for sinful practice it says they are in whosoever have sinned against me him will I blot out of my book the beginning and the bitterness of dancing in prison. I'm sure 
they were coming from the uh, from the uh, from the uh, battlefield and then the women came out men they came out and they were singing Saul has slain his thousands and David is ten thousand. The kind of songs, the same kind of dancing, and the kind of that puts hatred in the heart of Saul and from and the singing Saul eyed David from that day. Thirteen, he wanted to throw a javelin and kill him. Because of that, have you seen people leave, you know, one this lady and then the next comes dancing with her and now there is jealousy. And that lady is tending towards number two. When number one is still there and you say, I will marry you like we've danced together, let us live together married and the other one that danced with her too uh, also wants to claim her jealousy comes envy comes fighting comes and in the church there's animosity they're still attending the same church and they're still dancing and dancing but you know they don't have a good heart towards each other and so that kind of dancing brought when you get home you can read second samuel chapter 6 reading from verse Verse 23, what happened there is that the ark of the covenant of God was brought back to Israel, to the place. And then David was happy. And when David was happy, he forgot himself. A king, a king. He became frivolous. And then he was dancing and leaping and jumping. And his outer line up. And the women and everybody seen the under, underwear of the king. And so the king came to Michael had been waiting for him and said, what a great thing the king did today in exposing his nakedness to the land. Although David gave an excuse and said, uh, God chose me, uh, you know, before your But it says in verse 20, Michael had no child day of her death. You know what happened? David was so unhappy and so irritated by the criticism of Michael. After all, he had other women. He'll go to other women. Never came near that woman again. Just look at what the dancing has done for the family. That's the history. This dancing people are talking about in various places. It began well. It ended in bitterness. And I pray that the bitterness of worldly music will never come. Point number two: the business and backslide dancing for pleasure. If you uh, look at um, a uh, 21, I'm reading from verse 11. They set forth the little ones like a flock, their children dance. Those are not Christian people, righteous people, religious people. They just and one of the things they make children, they have a swimming pool at the back of the house, and they also have, uh, you know, music like you have in restaurants sometimes. There is playing music, not for dancing, classical music most of the time. But have, you know, kind of uh, things they make for their children, and their children dance. And those children, and any church and any assembly where there's no dancing for them, the word of God is told, sit in. And Jesus Christ on the mount, on the mount, preaching the sermon on the mount, and there's no singing, there's no dancing. He opened his mouth and began to tell them, Blessed are the poor. There said the kingdom of God, Blessed are they that they shall be comforted, and blessed are the meek, and blessed are the pure in heart, because they shall see God. Blessed are those when they are persecuted, they are rejoicing. 
God in heaven. And then those the children that used to dancing, they look. There's no drumming, there's no dancing, there's nothing at all. They said, what kind of service is this? Even the service of Jesus, when Jesus is the pastor, is the teacher, for them it is dull. They are hard to that. That's what they dance in the lives of people it preconditions their body that if they don't see that they don't see anything but and the chemistry class and before he comes to teach you know the drummers come and the children rise up and they dance and then the mathematics class before you the children have to rise up and dance will you understand how much history will you understand how much will you understand if you don't understand pass any exam that's what happens in those assemblies except there is dancing they don't want to hear any preacher how will they understand the word of God be converted how will their lives be and give in unto God. Look at these people. Look at verse 12 now. In verse 12 it says, They take the timbrel and harp and they rejoice at the sound of the organ. Look at verse 13. Verse 13, they spend their days in wealth and in a moment they go down. Verse 14 tells us, Therefore, they unto God depart from us. All we want is dancing, all we want is merriment. Depart from us. We desire not the knowledge of thy ways. That's does for them. It takes them, it makes them exhibit the baseness of the human nature and makes the Lord before backslide. If you know any of uh, the young people and older at our church, honestly and earnestly defended the faith was delivered unto the saints and they have gone into the dancing assemblies and then you you ask them ah, how about uh, you know why did you leave uh, the church you know the church deeper life i like our pastor but you know uh, the service is so dull we just sit down there for hours listening to the bible from cover to cover yes i understand knowledge is good but you know what in the houses i got there we're free how free are you you're free are you free to serve god are you free are you free from all the lusts of the flesh we're free about the things they used to know about what is this my verse of the bible follow peace with all men without which no man shall that when i was in different life but you know honestly honestly i've forgotten where that is in the bible now they don't remember because they do not desire the knowledge of his all that catches their attention is the dancing i pray where god has put you, you until you see the Lord face to face in Jesus name you know all the great things happening now in our church I pray you will get your own you know dancing without success why do I need that dancing without victory why do I need that? but the victory of God in your life without dancing let those who want to dance let them stay where they are but here we're climbing to the mountain top and here we're the faith that cannot fail and every mountain in your life will move away in jesus name look at that verse 15 there in verse 15 it says what that we should serve him they're not serving god only to dance and dance what is the almighty that will serve him and what profit uh, should we have if we pray to him look at verse 20 in verse 20 his eyes shall see his destruction when comes he doesn't have faith because faith comes hearing by the word of god when challenges come he cannot solve that problem because they entered not in 
unbelief. They are not developing their word of God. They are not getting ready for the coming of the Lord. said he is dancing and dancing. If you ask them after the studies, what did you get in I mean, those people who are giving to dancing and dancing, I, I don't, don't ask me what I got in the service. I just know I was happy. I just know I exercised myself. In fact, we danced until my legs. They remember, but here, 